10 years as a university or as Singularity, four years here at Global Summit, uh, it's a pleasure for me to give this opening keynote slot every year. And I think about what it is I want to convey uh, during this time. What is it that I can share with you that's new or a different way of looking at it that's going to be meaningful to yourselves as leaders, as CEOs, as entrepreneurs, as mothers, fathers. And I want to talk this year about a series of meta trends. You know, a lot of the trends that are going on in the world right now are almost unstoppable. Uh, and they're somewhat predictable. And it's perhaps this which has been Ray's superpower of envisioning and making extraordinary uh, predictions of where the world is going. So I want to share with you sort of the meta trends I'm seeing. I've got a book which comes out this January called The Future is Faster Than You Think. Um, I love the, the subtitle, How Converging Technologies Are Transforming Business Industries and Our Lives. And it's the realization that this convergence is what makes this different now and here. So cheaper, faster computers, and we're about to see this incredible uh, increase as quantum computing comes online and impacts almost every industry as it impacts machine learning and the materials genome and uh, pharmaceutical discoveries. And I'm not even talking about quantum, but regular classical computation is accelerating sensors, networks, AI, robotics, 3D printing, synthetic biology, AR, VR, blockchain. As computation gets stronger, so do these. And it used to be that you could be the expert in any one of these, and that was sufficient. But it's no longer the case. It's the convergence of these technologies that is really transforming our world. It's how two, three, or four of these are coming together and creating new business models. And as entrepreneurs, I think that's the most important thing that we should be looking at. What are the new business models? Not just the new technology. Right? Being an expert in the problem and not the technology, but the business models are where the juice is. The second thing going on right now, and I can feel this, and hopefully you can as well, is that the rate at which technology is getting faster is itself getting faster. We are accelerating the rate of technological acceleration. And there's a multitude of things that are coming together to make this possible. Right? More people are now connected than ever before. They have access to more computational than ever before. And they have the technology they're using is cheaper than ever before. And they're getting access to more intelligent supplementation than ever before. So we're literally accelerating you know, the first derivative of our acceleration. I hate to call it the jerk, but anyway, for the physicists in the room. Um, it is getting faster and faster. And so I want to call out a few meta trends uh, that are important, and I'll speak about just a few of these. The first, and you saw part of these slides, I'll show some of them again that Will showed, which is we are seeing increasing global abundance. It's hard for us to realize that as we see the crisis news network and all the negativity in the world, but what people have access to is more abundant than ever before. Uh, we're seeing an acceleration as things demonetize. Things are becoming, products and services are becoming cheaper and cheaper and becoming available to more and more people. And this in itself is creating more increased global abundance. Everyone everywhere is being connected at gigabit connection speeds. And this is going to change every one of our lives. I don't care what business you're in, the fact that every single person on the planet is being connected at gigabit connection speeds is going to be transformative. But it's not just people. We're connecting everything on this planet. IoT and IOE, we'll go into this in a little bit. And what this allows is us to ask questions like we'd never asked before. If everything is connected, we're heading towards a world where you can know anything, anytime. Number six, a revolution in personalized, autonomous, fast, and cheap transportation of people and things. Right? Uh, my dear friend Ramez Nam talks about this beautifully. Increasing human intelligence. And this is about AI and AR support of you to learn what you need to know in exactly the moment you need it, but also this incredible transformation before us on VCI. Increasing human longevity, health span, increasing capital abundance, and increasing global cheap energy. Again, what Ramez talks about so beautifully. So these are 10 of the 20 that I'm tracking. I'd like to dive into a half of these and talk about what they mean to us. So 
I want to pause here that I don't think any of us truly understand how fast the world is changing. And I think ultimately that's the role that we at Singular University, you, all of us play here at SU and in our Abundance Digital and Abundance 360 ecosystem is to help us understand, keep our finger on the pulse of how fast things are changing. You know, a lot of people are fearful about the future. In fact, most people are fearful about the future. Hopefully, as we have these conversations, we get excited about the future, excited about the tools that we have to solve problems. So let's hit on this idea again. I can't help but, but focus on it because you are, as members of the Singularity community, really the representatives to the world to help and, and pause in a conversation to say, hold it, I know that you see all this negativity around you, but let's look at the data. Let's take a second and look at the data where the world is truly is because Again, the, neg the news media's news cycles are designed to connect our eyes to their advertisers, and we pay 10 times more attention to negative news than positive news, and that's all we get fed. And as a result, all we see is the world in hell in a handbasket. So you saw uh, this, let me summarize, we've tripled the per capita global income over the last 100 years, the lifespan has doubled, the cost of food has dropped 20-fold, energies dropped a hundredfold transportation, thousands of fold communications, millions if not billions of fold cheaper. Take a look at this. This is uh, partly what you saw Will present, which is you know, increasing global prosperity or a decrease in number of people living below extreme poverty. But check out this last portion right here, which is the data presented at the start of this year. It's continuing and it's accelerating. Right? The world is secretly, quietly becoming more and more abundant. Increasing global literacy. You know, in this point, Will showed it, but again, what was life like when half of your children died before the age of five? What did it feel like to live in that kind of a world where you didn't name your child because it hurt less? if they died. The chance of having a mother die in childbirth has become de minimis in much of the world. Global average life expectancy has doubled. We're going to talk about, I'll talk about this and you'll hear during other programs, that we're on the verge of doubling the human life expectancy again. Right? The most precious thing we have is our lives and the time and how we use that time. Uh, I was having a conversation at lunch with a family about exponent, at exponential family luncheon about, about increasing global populace, and aren't you concerned about that? Bill Gates has two great TED Talks on this subject. But look at this. In the 1950s, about 100 families had six or more children per family. You do two things to a population center. You make them healthier and better educated. The number of children per family plummet. You can see how rapidly that's decreasing over time. Here's another way to look at it. The child replacement rate for the Earth is 2.1 children per family is what allows break-even. We're decreasing. In the U.S., we're below the U.S. population replacement level. Globally, we're 2.42. In red, airlines are clearly still the safest means of transportation on the planet. That blue line, our automobiles, when we get to autonomous cars, those will drop down to a near zero death rate as well. Global disaster deaths. So what's happening in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s? Why are the number of deaths per hurricane, per flood, per storm, per epidemic, why are they decreasing? It's not that there are less of them, it's that we have access to the data to predict them better, to get help in that golden hour, right? These technologies are supporting this, and this is from Steven Pinker's book called The Better Angels of Our Nature, where he shows us we're living during the most peaceful time ever in human history, which is really hard to fathom, but it's true. So let's talk about why this is happening, why now? For me, it's the impact of these exponential technologies. It's the result of the technologies that you guys are creating, investing in, utilizing to make the world a better place. 
Another impact of exponential technologies is to take what was scarce and make it abundant over and over again. And what would you think of as more scarce than a beautiful four, five, six carat diamond? Right? There's a company not far from here called the Diamond Foundry. In one end comes methane, water, electricity. Out the other end comes perfect diamonds, six carats, eight carats, 10 carats. How big would you like it? Would you like imperfections in it? No problem. You want to see what a real diamond ring looks like? Check this out. All of a sudden, we go from scarcity to abundance to a squanderable abundance of what we want. Technology is the force that takes what used to be scarce and makes it abundant. So inside your industries, inside your services, how do you take what you're doing right now and go from a scarcity mindset, I'm going to put my arms around it and meter out a little bit at a time, to an abundance mindset? Because if you're not doing that, someone else is. So what do you think of as scarce? Energy? No. We live on a planet bathed in 6,000 times more energy from the sun than we consume as a species. Right? We used to kill whales on the ocean to light the nights. Then we ravaged mountainsides for coal. Then we started drilling kilometers under the water. You know, we are not far from a penny per kilowatt hour from the sun. And believe me when I say the poorest countries on the planet are the sunniest countries on the planet. You have abundant energy, that means abundant water. We just awarded last year the Water Abundance X Prize, pulling liters, 1,000 liters, 2,000 liters out of the atmosphere in 24 hours from renewable energy. It turns out there are quadrillions of liters of water in the atmosphere distributed evenly around the planet. If you have energy, you've got water. Time, money, resources, expertise, we'll talk about some of these. The other thing that's going on is we're going from those things that used to be so scarce, right? Bandwidth used to be scarce. It's plummeting in cost, as is computational power, as is storage costs, as is sequencing the human genome from $100 million to below $1,000 today. And one of the reasons that the world is getting better is that you as entrepreneurs are trying more and more startups, more and more crazy ideas. Remember, the day before something is truly a breakthrough, it's a crazy idea. And inside your company, if you're stuck on trying reasonable ideas, predictable ideas, linearly expected ideas, you're never going to have a breakthrough. So where and how do you try that? So in 2000, to start an internet-based company, it was about a $5 million cost for the servers, for the software, for the people, for the bandwidth. You know, that dropped over time to the point where it's now cheap. It's now easy to have an idea, go put something up on the web, maybe go start a Kickstarter campaign or whatever it might be, and test and find out if people want to buy it. So the number of ideas being tried is exploding. It's not that entrepreneurs have necessarily better ideas. They may, you may. It's just that entrepreneurs were willing to try and experiment and fail and try again over and over again, while large corporations have to have it approved properly and make sure that it's OK and that it doesn't disrupt something internally. And so we only try that idea at the end of the process where it's dead on, del on delivery. The other thing that's going on right now that supplements that is that we're at a time of massive capital abundance. You know, we have an unprecedented influx of capital around the world from a range of areas. So back in 2017, in the US and in Europe, we hit all-time capital highs. Then we hit them again in 2018. We're going to hit them again in 2019. More and more capital available to invest in companies. Right? Crowdfunding is hitting all-time highs. Look at this, by 300 billion by 2025, which means it doesn't matter where you live. If you've got an idea, it's a meritocracy, you can be in the middle of no place with a good bandwidth connection and have your ideas funded by the crowd. I love this quote from Masasan, who's just raising his next multi-hundred billion dollar fund. I totally believe the singularity is coming in the next 30 years. That's why I'm in a hurry to aggregate cash and to invest. The next decade is going to see the transformation of every single industry, not some, every industry. We're also going to create more wealth in the next 10 years than we have in the entire past century. And here's what's going on. Capital abundance plus 
the six Ds, demonetization in particular, means that entrepreneurs are running more experiments, more crazy ideas, and more business models. Right? YouTube gets started by Chad Hurley on his credit cards and sold to Google for $1.6 billion 18 months later. There's no way to explain Lyft and Uber to Enterprise Rent-A-Car, the taxi fleets over here. Check this out. This is an eye chart, but on the far left is 2011, and each of these logos is a billion-dollar startup. Look how fast it accelerates to 2015. The rate at which entrepreneurs, all of you, are creating companies, shots on goal. Maybe a thousand, one in a thousand will succeed and be, a, be a, a unicorn. And then today, we're at 360 unicorns in 2019. Another meta trend going on right now that is so impactful, so important for us to be talking about, it's the notion that everyone is about to be connected at gigabit connection speeds. So today, in the US, in China, in Europe, in Asia, around the world, is the beginning of the deployment of 5G, right? So your device over here, instead of at 10 megabits or 100 megabits, is now at 10 gigabits. What that means is you can download a motion picture in you know, under a second. It means you can take your LG or Samsung TV and put it on the wall and plug it in. It's got a connection automatically. It's going to transform, and it's intersecting with AR and VR and AI. Besides 5G, it's Google Loon, it's Greg Weiler, uh, and his OneWeb constellation is being launched right now as we speak. It's SpaceX with their Starlink launching 12,000 satellites, giving us gigabit connection speeds. But it's not just that. Amazon has got their Coupier satellite system of 3,000 satellites at $100 billion. In fact, there is a global explosion in connectivity around the world. We're about to reach a period of time in the next four to six years, right now, right here, no one's talking about this, where we're going from half the world being connected at 3.8 billion people to the entire globe being connected, where all of us are connected all the time, everywhere. Right, so what happens when 4.2 billion new minds enter the global conversation, right? These 4 billion new individuals coming online, they're all going to want to create, to discover, to consume, to buy, to upload. They're all entrepreneurs. How do you tap into them? How do you tap into that incredible wisdom and intelligence around the world, right? At the end of the day, these are tens of trillions of dollars flowing into the global economy. The old economic systems are no longer valid. No one counts these four billion minds entering the global economy. And if you thought the world was going fast, wait till four billion new inventors come online. They're all connected to gigabits. They all have access to Google or Baidu. They all have access to quantum computing in the cloud. They all have access to 3D printing in the cloud. What are they going to start to create? Because these four billion people, the last billion, the rising billion, They've been entrepreneurs to survive. And they're about to get access to incredible tools. We're going to see this uptick in the rate of global innovation that we've never seen before. This is the acceleration of the acceleration. But besides people being connected, it's everything. Right? My friends at Cisco talk about the IoT and the IOE, 20 billion connected devices, a trillion sensors. Right? Your Aura Ring, your Apple Watch, your devices you're wearing on your body. A decade later, it's 500 billion connected devices, 100 trillion sensors. And from McKinsey, $6.2 trillion of global economics in the next five years from this everything being connected. Huge wealth, right? When I talk about creating more wealth in the next 10 years than we have in the entire past century, it's things like this. I love this example. Car data, right? We never think about autonomous cars being a mechanism for creating data value. But car data from autonomous cars alone will generate $750 billion of revenue by 2030. 